Well, hello, boys and girls. Happy Eclipse Day. Do you know that this is the first time in months that CNN has been playing on the television at work and not a single mention of President Trump was made? By God, what's happened to the world? CNN not mentioning President Trump? Wow. So that eclipse must have been pretty important. I went out and checked it out. I don't know. It got dark for a few seconds. No big deal. Anyway, what is a big deal is a new project. So I've decided it's time to start a new project. And this time I'm going to do something that's a, a little bit more mainstream. What is it going to be? It's a Zenith 10S 464. Those of you that know Zenith know that the 10 part in 10S means it's a 10 tube radio. And the 4 part means that it's a 1940 radio. So it's a 10S 464. Most of the time that S means a floor console that's an AC powered radio. So we're going to dive into this. Actually, I've gotten the radio about three quarters done. Um, I've had some computer issues, as I've mentioned in a couple of my videos, and I'm finally resolving them. The manufacturer of the computer is taking good care of me, but uh, it's put me behind in my videos. So even though this radio is nearly done and I've got a whole bunch of videos shot, I'm just now starting to put the videos up for it. So buckle your seatbelts, get ready. We're going to dive into this Zenith. Now, I will warn you, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the videos on the recap and the, and the regular stuff. What I am going to spend time on is how to take it apart and how to put it back together, because those are the things I don't see covered very often in videos, and I'd kind of like to see those things be what are, are featured in this video. Um, the recapping stuff and all that, we all know how to do that, and if we don't, there's lots of videos out there for it. But I haven't seen anybody take apart one of these radios on uh, YouTube yet. So, without holding us up anymore, let's dive in, shall we? Okay, we are going to try a first uh, a look at this Zenith. It's a 10S4 something. I think it's a 468 or 463, but I'm not sure. Anyways, a 10S, it's a 1940 radio, uh, 10 tube. Um, so, we're going to give it a try now and see what we come up with. Going to bring it up on the Variac. All right, so what we have here we have the speaker, um, it's all connected to the radio. We have the wave magnet connected to the radio, and the radio is, is being powered up by the Variac and the isolation transformer. So let's give it a try. Power is on on the set. Let's see. Current's coming up normally at about a quarter amp now at 60 volts. Lights are on, so that means a 6.3 winding is fine. If I remember right, this has got a couple of 5Y3s in it. This is one of those dual rectifier radios. Okay, 75 volts. Nothing yet from the speaker. I see filament on all the tubes. 90 volts, any time now I'll start getting some sound. There we go, I hear some hum coming. 100 volts. Got static, let's see what we get here. You know what, this may be on uh, shortwave. Let, let me turn it down and I'll kick it over and make sure it's on uh, standard broadcast. Okay, that must be automatic because I'm getting the station in quietly, but it's not affected by the tuning. There we go. Let's go up to 110 volts. A lot of, I got some power supply hum. Ready for 
problem because it's not that just that hey you said I hit like a girl I'm gonna slug you it's now that I'm going to make sure you're expelled from school and you have at about to go through 0.6 amps at 120 volts he points out that uh, this has been close 0.65 amps at 120 volts this whole development he presents the notion it is working Real selective, but not very loud. It's, it's on full blast right now, and that's all I'm getting out of it. So I'll have to sort that out. But it is tuning. I do have audio, and uh, it seems like everything's working out okay. So let me turn it down. Okay, looking inside this radio, it all looks pretty original to me. That looks like an original electrolytic right there. These all look like original capacitors, original resistors. I don't think this thing has ever been messed with. Someone has replaced this cord. Usually I'll run um, O-rings here, but this seems to be doing okay. I don't like that it doesn't really, that it doesn't have a spring tension in. Um, all the you know every, everything must be working because it played actually and selected very well but uh, like I said it wasn't loud and there was power supply hum so that electrolytic will have to be replaced all these caps should be replaced all of them that'll take care of the hum and any distortion I'm hearing and that sort of thing and we'll go ahead and measure all these resistors somebody has done some work because these resistors here these little carbon comps are not original and uh, so that's okay there's nothing wrong with that in almost every way it's very similar to uh, uh, an 8s463 which I've done half a dozen of it had, does have the extra uh, it's got a push-pull output so it has an extra output tube and I believe it has twin rectifiers so um, really, I think it's basically the same radio as an 8S463, which uh, makes it nice for me because I'm very familiar with these sets. Every, the layout here looks the same. There's nothing at all different about it. And things, the, the cool thing about this radio is it looks unmolested. No one's really messed with it. It looks like from the bolts that someone has replaced the transformer at some point. Okay, 6x5. Boy, I hope it doesn't have twin 6x5s. I've done one other zinger that hit. Yep. Okay, it does have twin rectifiers, but they're 6x5s and they are not 5y3s. That's a tricky beast. I have seen two of them fail on radios that I have uh, either been working on or have owned. So I'm not real fond of the 6x5, but the later versions the and the ruggedized ones, the 6x5Ws, I think it's called, uh, they're pretty good. And I've got a small stash of those, so we'll see. But anyway, uh, the the eye tube did not light up. That's pretty normal. They, they never light up. Uh, they're always dead. The grommets, no, the grommets are pretty hard. Yeah, they're they're chipping away when I push on them with the screwdriver. So these grommets should be replaced. Let's see what else. I think this. Uh, I think everything else is pretty straightforward here. There, now you can watch, Fred. Okay, I'm joined by my old buddy Freddy today. And uh, what we're going to do is get to working on this Zenith. It's actually a model 10S464. I might have said 463 before, but there isn't a 10S463. This is a 10S464. And uh, I've already played the thing, as you know. So now I need to just start the disassembly and uh, get working on it. First things first, I'd like to get all the fragile stuff off. So let me get these tubes off of here. And I don't like to store dirty tubes. I don't see why now isn't as good a time as any to clean these tubes off. Now, you'll watch what I'm doing. You see, there are the numbers on the etched on the glass. These numbers will come off on a lot of tubes, and I think these, uh, these uh, ST-style 
these coke bottle style tubes it will come off and it doesn't take much so usually the paint on the base will come off if you rub it a lot but if you're real gentle um, and don't rub it much it'll be okay so so what I'll do is I'll wipe off all of the glass except for the part with the numbers and then when I'm wiping off I'll just wipe over the numbers and that's usually good enough to get it clean and there's nothing prettier than clean tubes on a radio see that looks real nice now I'm going to do that to all of the tubes and uh, the way I store them really simple I just take a couple of these I use Viva paper towels because they're soft but they they are expensive and they're not really a whole lot better than the other paper towels for holding up. And I wrap them up like so. And I just stick them down in a bag and I will go on to the next one. Fred, I don't need you up here, buddy. You stay over there. Now that was the 6J5 tube. And if you're looking at the chassis from the front, it's the first one you see on the left here. Then you've got a pair of 6V6s, the output tubes. They're going to come off. And it's the same sort of drill on all the tubes. It's a 10 tube radio. So now Zenith like to count their eye tube as one of the tubes, which to me is kind of like cheating. But you know, it was their radio. They could do what they want. So if you if you do this, then when by the time you get to where you're putting these back on the radio, you're usually kind of like, wow, let's just get this thing over with. Let's get it done. And so um, you're kind of grateful that you've already cleaned the tubes at that point. Because, you know, you finished your work and you're kind of eager to test it out. And the last thing you want to look at are dirty tubes. I watch uh, Jim Lindeness an awful lot on YouTube and he, his cat Shadow shows up a lot in his videos and uh, it made me think well you know what maybe uh, maybe Fred can sit a little closer to the bench and uh, it'll be okay he's not gonna hurt anything I won't let him on the bench he's not a kitten anymore he's big and he knocks things over but uh, I can go ahead and let him watch he's, he's such a friendly little fella that, so those are both two V6s. This is the uh, 6Q7. These uh, metal tubes too, you want to be careful. They will wipe clean. You want to, Some of them do and some don't. And you don't want yours to be the one that does. And then you wipe all the stuff off. Because that's sort of part of the allure of these things, you know. They, they, they look they look kind of cool on the radio now well if you get them nice and clean that darn thing will look like a new tube i did not know i always thought the metal tubes were later and the glass tubes came first but the truth is the metal tubes came out first okay fred no 6K7, that'll be the IF amplifier. See how nice it is? You get them clean, they look good. What's funny is this, this one was dirtier than the rest of them, and this is the one that was hidden inside the shield. I guess Fred got bored with me. All right, so let's take off one of the 6X5s. I grab them by the base and I wiggle them a little bit and sometimes kind of go around and around. Just don't start yanking on the glass because that's how you, you separate the glass from the base and then you got to glue the thing and it's no fun. What's really cool is all of these so far have been, except for one, it said CBS on it, all the rest have been Zenith tubes. That's kind of cool. Now these 6X5s, um, I'm not a big fan of 6X5s, but, and these are the old ones too. These are not the ruggedized ones or the military ones, so, and they are not the X pattern. So these are the ones that are most vulnerable to failure. Kenneth Scharf, I think that's how you say his name, he's a subscriber of mine. 
he suggested putting a fuse in the center tap for the main power transformer and that way if these things short like 6x5s can do um, it's a real good way to uh, shut the radio down without damaging it. I've never done that before. I've put them in the line and I actually put them in the filament circuit circuits in that Edison because at Edison I, every you know I, I read lots and lots of accounts of uh, failed uh, filament windings on those Edison transformers so I thought I would kind of look out for the customer there and and kind of cover that radio but um, I, I'll, I'll maybe start looking at doing it in the uh, center tap now check it out here's a, uh, a Loctil tube but a Zenith one now we all know that Philco made an awful lot of or sold an awful lot of Loctil tubes but this one happens to be Zenith and that is the uh, Oh, it's, I forget. They got a funny number for them. It's like 1232. I forget what the 1232 is. This one's a Raytheon, so this one's been replaced. And this one, this uh, chassis had a tube shield where this tube originally was, but then this type here, the, the section that needs to be shielded is shielded, so you don't need a tube shield when you use these. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Now, I, I know from testing this radio that this iTube is, is dead. These dang things are getting expensive. They're like 85 bucks now. And that's not including shipping. So some people um, want to do them and some people don't. They're always stuck on the base, these uh, 6U5s. I don't know why. Always a bugger to get off of there. So there it is, 6U5, also um, a 6G5. They're cool tubes. I wish I understood why they're always dead. And it seems like even if they were working when the radio was last used, but if the radio was used 40 years ago, the tube will be dead when you fire the radio up. And, and I, don't know, I don't know what the deal is with that. Is there something inside that deteriorates with time? It's a vacuum tube, so it's not like there's oxygen in there. Okay. Here are all the tubes. Of course, what I'm after right now is delicate stuff, so let me get this off of here. Sometimes these are stuck. This one wasn't bad, but these break really easily. You want to protect this one very, very cautiously. I have a little glasses case, a little travel case that I usually keep those in, but it disappeared not too long ago and I haven't been able to find it. Yeah. Okay. Wifey is calling me for dinner, so I need to head upstairs. So we will pick this back up in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to now disconnect these lamps and just sort of leave them sitting there. Actually, I'll take the lamp bulbs out because they'd like to get broken. And now I want to get this plate off of here. If I remember right, this whole plate can come off with this, this bracket here that supports that supports it from the top actually before I do that I had already taken the bolts out of this guy let me disconnect it but I want to point out something to you about these 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 are color coded they're really nice you don't have to mark them or anything the red wire goes into the little terminal clip marked with the red paint spot the red paint line this black one goes here with one that's marked with black and then this is actually blue and it goes here with a little terminal that's marked with a blue paint stripe. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, clean these wires so you can really see what they look like. See? 
Sometimes these wires are okay, but a lot of times these are pretty shot too. Here's the thing, man. I want to know why some colors um, are almost always cracking, and other co while other colors are not. It's kind of a weirdness of these old radios. Whenever you find radios with a lot of bad wiring, one or two of the colors is usually worse than the others. All right, so you can see red, black, and blue. Go ahead and disconnect these. They just slide right, right out. Okay, and then that's all there is to it. I removed these two screws that held this on. And then when I get to it, I'll take this cover off and I'll, check, I'll clean in here and I'll check things out. Usually there aren't any components to replace in here. There's just some cleaning and lubrication to do. And I'll check all the coils too. And also, I forgot, I also like to clean and lubricate just with a touch of tiniest bit of grease these screws so that they're easy to turn when the time comes. Let us go ahead and remove this, this plate. First step, I'll go ahead and remove these two screws here. And I usually want to put the hardware in a smaller baggie so that it, does, it can stay together. Okay, these little, they're kind of a cross between a sheet metal screw and a machine screw with a little fender washer behind them. You want to be very careful with these. Do not clean this with water. You'll wash that right off. A couple of screws back here behind the bracket, behind the uh, tuning condenser. Now, uh, one or two people have commented that I like to use the word condenser when referring to the tuning condenser. And that's true, I do. And sometimes I'll even call capacitors condensers. And uh, I've been kind of kind of called out a little bit by folks saying, hey, these are, been, these are capacitors, not condensers. Well, they're actually both. It's okay to call them condensers. Well, that's an old-fashioned term. We haven't used that in a long time. Well, I'm working on old-fashioned stuff. And so when I read books and I watch old film clips on working on these, they call them condensers. And so I've trained my brain when I see the word condenser to think, you know, what you would think of as a capacitor. And I see no reason to change that habit since I don't expect I'll be working on any brand new equipment anytime soon. Um, since I'm going to stay with this, I might as well keep myself thinking in terms of the way it was referred to when it was made. It makes it easier to read the material. I'm not constantly doing a translation. All right, this comes off real easy. Nothing to it, guys. This is the, uh, the they call it the radio organ, and it's basically a tone control. Um, the wires on these, when they are made of cloth, they're usually in good shape, and this one's no exception. I can just leave this alone. I'll clean it. I'll deoxid the contacts, and that's all I need to do on this. And I won't even remove this here. These little buttons are a pain in the ass to replace if you ever have to. So I'm, I'm going to try not to. All right. I will clean them, and I will deoxid the little rivet contacts that are in there. But uh, that's all I will do. So what I do to make sure that it doesn't get broken, because I don't want to have to fix it, is I will go ahead and... Uh, wrap this beauty up in something soft and you know I was going to leave these two together but they're a real pain in the butt this way so I think what I will do is go ahead and separate them it's just a couple more of the, those funny screws only these are painted black sitting up here actually I've seen lots of these radios with these silver this first one I've seen with them painted black they're kind of a weird little screw in that you've got to really get, push hard on them with the nut driver to get them loose. I don't like to use the screwdriver because then I slip off of there and I scrape the paint. So now, you know, you have to touch it up. This comes off really easily. So I prefer to use the nut driver, at least for most of the turning. Okay, there we go. Now this I'll clean very gently with a very lightly, lightly damp cloth. This one's in good shape. Most of the ones I see, this is lacquer, and then it's a water-based paint that's, that's been um, um, silk screened onto it. This lacquer will often have alligatoring. It'll start to crack in an alligator skin pattern. This one has the beginnings of it, but it's not quite doing that yet. So what I'll probably do is clean it up nicely, and then I'll probably put a real light coat of wax on it. That'll help it. All right, so 
pretty much done with everything I can do up here. This is all very creative, but it's wrong. Okay, it's, it's done wrong. Um, so that needs to come off of there. I'm just, I'm not even going to show any mercy. I know how these go together, so I really don't need to, I don't need to get a picture of how this is. And you can see it in the video, and that's enough for me. So, very interesting. I wonder what that material is. But it doesn't matter. It's got to come out of there. Now, there will be a, there's, oh, there is a spring on this, but they had it behind the wheel. And actually, the truth is, I think they have this wheel on backwards. No, no difference, no matter. I'll go ahead and remove it now. Actually, I'll leave it on there for now because it really doesn't matter that much. Okay, it's too bad I have to pull this off. The reason is these grommets are shot. They're always shot. Look at that, see? Look at that, nothing left there. I don't like things flopping around. Because it's going to be in my way. So I'll remove it. It's got a nice plug. I certainly can reuse that plug. No reason not to do that. These Xena chassis are, are nice. They're roomy. But they're actually a little bit hard to work in because they're so deep. You're constantly reaching into a deep well. Now I see what we're up against. This will be a real snap to get this, uh, this tuning condenser out of here. Three nuts. One two, three, and it'll drop right out. So let me get this, uh, this assembly off of here first. I don't, uh, I don't like working on these with the wheel in there. It'd be great, this will... Now the way you get these apart, first thing you have to do is take off the uh, power switch uh, shaft that controls the power switch, okay? So it's this little, little set screw right here removes this little pop metal um, coupler. You want to hold on, keep track of these parts, man, because they get lost. You're you're looking for something to replace them because the whole thing works better with all the parts. Okay. What this does is this enables you to get the shaft out. Okay. It enables you to slide this whole shaft out of there, okay, the piece of cake. Now, when you put it back, I want you to bear in mind that the short flat goes toward the power switch. The long flat goes out toward the knob. You have to get this whole shaft assembly out of here, and there's some steps you have to do to do it. The really hard one is you have to get this, there's a little C-clip right here that you have to get off of there without losing it. Okay, it's right down there. My, everyone's going to have their own way. You'll have yours. I like to use a pair of pliers, and I, and I slap the pair of pliers, and that'll sometimes pop it right off. Sometimes it won't. There we go. Popped it right off. Now, before you do anything, before you answer the phone, before you go to the bathroom, before you kiss your sweetheart, you put this in a baggie. Because if you lose that, you're screwed. All right, there's like two of them on every radio. You got to have that, okay? Don't lose that guy. That's important. And they're just as much of a pain to put on as they are to take off. They like to go flying. So be aware of that. Now with that loose, see that fits in a little groove. That fits in a little groove right here on this brass shaft, okay? Once you've got that loose, then you can go ahead and loosen this set screw up here on this wheel. There are two set screws. You get that loose and you can slide this, you can usually slide this shaft out enough to take that little coupler off. These set screws will find their way to some hiding place that you will never find. That's just how they are. Okay, so there you go. See, now, before you do much else, once you slide this back, there is a little washer that sits on here. You want to get that off of there, too, okay? Now, the little washer goes against the bushing. I'll show you the... the there, now, there are two things here. 
there's a washer and a little plastic bushing that goes inside the, the uh, brass tube. And this plastic bushing has got kind of a crap. See, now I have to go find it. I told you, I heard where it landed. Now I have to go find the damn thing. It landed behind my bench. You know, every now and then you should take an excursion under your bench and you'd be surprised what you'll find down there. This little fella has a little, little sort of a hammerhead shape to it, a little flat on the top, okay? This thing goes into, if this is the tube, this thing goes into the tube like that. So this little flat here keeps it from going in too far. And what, that, what this thing does, this bushing, it provides a little sort of a, uh, an operating surface or an operating space for that shaft. That shaft rides in that bushing. Okay, now, the the, this, this uh, copper tube or brass tube rides in a bushing that sits right here. Okay, there is an, a, a bushing right here. When you slide this tube out, that bushing will want to fall out. So you want to gather that up too. Sometimes they'll stay in, but they'll stay in only long enough for you to forget they're there, and then they'll fall out when you're not looking. It's kind of like the ring in the Lord of the Rings, if you know what I mean. As soon as you're not paying attention, it finds its way out of your pocket. Okay? Now this fits in this hole right here in this bracket. Let's show you what the shape of it looks like. Okay, it's kind of a plastic affair, and you'll be, you might be able to find something that's kind of the right size, but I, I believe me, I've tried, I can never find anything that's exactly that size. It's, you'll, it'll be evident which way to put it in, but there is a fat side right over here where my finger is, is the fat side. That goes toward the power switch, okay, and it goes into the bracket like that. If this is the bracket, it goes in like that with the fat side, keeping it from going too far. Now this video will prevent me from losing track of where all these parts go. This is that little power switch coupler. It couples the shaft to the power switch, okay? Real simple. It's got a large hole with a little splitter in the middle of it, like a little divider. That's because the power switch has a slot in it. You can see that, that slot right there, okay? And that, that, little, uh, that little wall fits in that slot, okay? Just like so. And then it's got a really narrow hole, really small diameter hole that the power switch shaft goes into and gets locked down with this set screw. All right, we're making progress, guys. Okay, now what we have is the uh, flywheel dangling off of this, this, cop, this brass tube. I keep wanting to call it copper. My wife works with copper when she makes jewelry a lot, so I'm always thinking copper. So this has two set screws. Like, there is no index rotationally, only distance from the bracket and from, you know, the power switch. And that's not, even that distance is not that important, just as long as it's somewhere in the middle. So you slide this copper, this brass tube out, and you take out the flywheel. The flywheel is oriented with the flat side facing the power switch and the hollowed out side facing the front of the radio. And then, of course, you have this little guy right here. And this is the, uh, the tuning shaft drive pulley, okay? It's just a little brass pulley. And you've marked it already on the shaft where it goes. And then you can slide the shaft out, okay? So I usually will put this back on the shaft. I don't know why. I think it helps me to orient the shaft in case I get myself lost. Okay, and I'll put it right where my index, see I make my index marks so that they're next to each other like that. And then I know not only where this goes if it's indexed rotationally, but distance wise too, longitudinally. And then I'll just go ahead and lightly tighten the set screw just enough to keep it on there. Now, one more thing, there is another one of these plastic bushings up here. You don't want to lose these. Sometimes this one won't want to come out. But believe me, they, they, it will come out when you're not looking. So you want to try and get it out of there if you can. But don't pry on it much because you'll break it. They break, they're pretty brittle. But the cool thing about them is, is they don't require any lubrication. When the shaft sits in it, you don't have to lubricate that shaft. These things 
are slippery enough. This one does not want to come out. And that happens to me, that's happened to me before. I think maybe they put them in and then they push down on them with something hot to flatten it out. So when that happens, what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tape on each side so it can't fall out. And as long as that tape is there, I know that bushing is there. Okay, so that's done. Now I usually want to take these out and clean them because they're all stiff like that. That's really stiff. And that's real easy to do. On the outside of this, I'm not you'll be able to figure it out. There's a little quarter inch nut that uh, you want to just go ahead and loosen. And I put this wheel in its own baggie so all its hardware goes with it. Loosen the nut and there's a little star washer behind it. Meanwhile, you're holding this screw steady. You pull the whole shooting match out of there and then I always put the star washer and the nut back on the wheel. And I will clean this whole thing when its turn comes. Let me get that back on there so I can show you how it works. All right. So what you have here is an aluminum wheel that has a, uh, a brass, a little brass tube mounted into it with a set screw, okay? And you lock this aluminum wheel down onto that brass tube with this set screw. Through the brass tube, you have this screw, okay? And this screw has a, has a fender washer that goes inside the chassis. And the tube goes, it, it sticks out a little bit beyond the chassis, so it sticks out. And then you tighten this nut and the star washer against the brass tube. Not again, it doesn't tighten against the chassis, it tightens against that brass tube. And that way, this thing is free to turn because the, uh, the screw acts as an axle inside that brass tube. But they usually get gummed up. I don't know if people lubricate them too much or what. They get gummed up, and so you, you usually have to take them off and clean them. And meanwhile, I clean the whole wheel just, just because I can. Now, I usually leave the power switch and this bracket in place. There's no need to take them out of there, and so I'll leave them in. This is why I use sewing machine grease. It doesn't get sticky like this um, nearly as readily as some of the other greases that people use over the years. See, that's pretty sticky. I like to use something that's not going to get that sticky. Now sewing machine grease will, after a long time, get a little sticky, but not, not as bad, and I, and I only use a tiny, tiny bit. This was over greased. So all of this was all part of one task, and so I will bag all of it in one big bag. Okay, and in that big bag will go the flywheel too, so all of this is one big task. So when I get ready to put all this stuff back, I pull this bag out and I have all the parts I need. Well, I think we've gotten a pretty good start on this project now. And uh, we've pretty well taken it apart and gotten it ready to do the recap. Now, I, as I mentioned, I'm not going to bore you with all of the recap details. I'll just show you progress as I get along. And then we'll pick back up when we do some of the more interesting stuff. So we'll close this down for now. And uh, we'll pick it up in part two. So from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.